Hey Jason, good morning or good afternoon. I don't know what's it in Zurich at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just uh, post lunch, one uh, fifty p.m. here. Excellent. Uh, my background still shows Dubai, but I'm I'm very much in Zurich. I know the background should show the Alps, right, and uh, not uh, Dubai, right? Uh, <laughs> good to be uh, having you, Jason. You know, uh, for for friends, Jason is a good friend, a supporter of Transfy, and uh, you know somebody who's uh, been critical to Cello as uh, the platform has built out. Jason, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and what brought you to Cello? Yeah, absolutely. And happy to do that. So I, I lead founder programs at the Cello Foundation, um, helping startups that are building on the platform uh, go from zero to one and build out interesting businesses. Cello as a blockchain platform is a layer one blockchain, which means that, uh, and, and it's focused on building out mobile first infrastructure. So we have all layers of the stack, including the layer one blockchain itself, so proof of stake and carbon negative, taking a fair uh, inclination towards the DeFi space, as well as like quite a few applications building out on DeFi. I joined fairly early and we've grown out our ecosystem to north of uh, 800 plus startups building on top of our uh, platform and a uh, lot more funding that has come in. Um, part of my work is to help startups out with product engineering, hiring, fundraising, and just like the ecosystem building process. Uh, and I've been at it and plugged into the crypto space since about 2015, 2016, bought my first crypto around that time. Outside of work, I mean, I actively teach a course at, uh, at, at Miami University, also angel invest quite actively into startups that I really like in even. I'm also taking quite an inclination towards the academic side of the world and um, to publish papers into journals uh, centered around crypto and blockchain and you know really helping like the academic community with regard to like their, their work in trying to accelerate presence of crypto there despite it being a blockchain I mean an open source community as well but uh, you know that's the long and short about um, some of the stuff I'm working on I'm very excited about what y'all are doing at Transfy and uh, uh, eager to chat with you more about uh, what, what you all have been up to. Absolutely. And by the way, 800 uh, uh, companies or developers on the Cello ecosystem is quite incredible. Uh, by the way, I didn't know you got into the space in 2015, 16. I'm not going to ask you what price you bought your first BTC <laughs> at. <laughs> Uh, so Jason, you know, uh, Celo is a stable coin, as I understand an algorithmic stable coin. And uh, there's been a lot of, you know, news in the recent times in the last uh, few months in particular uh, on stable coins, both positive and negative. There are, you know, stable coins being issued in new, you know, currencies. Uh, I know about Aussie dollar, uh, the digital uh, yen is coming up. And there have been some negative news as well with the Terra story. Um, what is your uh, view on stable coins? I know you've been doing a lot of research of late. Where do you see the space? Um, and uh, what's the future of stable coins in your view? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question to kind of unpack. Maybe I can give a brief context on like Celo's um, platform, the stable coins that are on top of like Celo's platform that are available to our end users. Potentially, just like my views on the on the stable coin uh, space as a whole. Celo, as mentioned, is a layer one blockchain platform. So, and and stable coins are typically applications or smart contracts that are deployed on top of the platform. Uh, just as like background and context for, for folks that might be new to crypto, a smart contract can be, um, you, you could have any stablecoin deployed as a smart contract and you could have a variety of stablecoins. And as stablecoins maintain their peg, what sets each stablecoin unique is typically the, the mechanism with which it's been designed and like how it's been backed. These are the two things that tend to set different stablecoins apart. And you may have come across, you know, Tether, Solo Dollar, uh, USD, USDC, et cetera. And they're all unique in their own way and have had different strategies to the way in which they've been getting adoption and growth, et cetera. That's kind of the background uh, behind stablecoins itself. So some on top of the platform has stablecoins that are um, fairly native to the, the platform in that uh, we have a protocol called Mento Protocol, which again is a smart contract that's deployed on top of Celo that allows for a hybrid version of stablecoins to be available. What do I mean by hybrid? is basically a crypto backed yet algorithmically adjusted stablecoin that allows for over collateralized stablecoins to be issued. So the reserve is completely transparent and anyone can see it. And currently the collateralization ratio is north of three, which means that for every dollar that's issued, you will have a backing of ETH and BTC and you know other the basket of tokens basically that grow past 3x mark. And we intend to maintain a stable reserve that allows us to essentially issue 
at an organic, sustainable pace. And that is one thing that's unique about Salo in that we're trying to grow very organically and very sustainably. The reason for that is sometimes the co- customer acquisition cost that comes in the production of stable coins tends to be one that is unsustainable, in which the issuance outgrows the, the backing offering. And that tends to be unhealthy. So if you envision a system, a complex system, when you tend to issue more than you have like capacity for, you tend to push the system into instability. And so uh, that is that is kind of the rationale behind the design and development of the stable coin. The mechanism is fairly simple. There is a smart contract that takes in $1 worth of um, asset in the back that allows you to issue a, a unique stable coin. So the burn, mint and burn mechanism allows you to essentially mint and burn based on the number of uh, the asset that's available. And this happens organically based on like the requirement. So we eye use cases, we eye the ecosystem, and we try to essentially have the growth be a lot more natural. Off late, we've had the platform that's um, surrounding, um, you know, the stable coins essentially be an independent platform as opposed to like the cello blockchain itself, which is the layer one blockchain, be separate from the, the, the stability protocol itself. Long and short, the stablecoin mechanism that Salo uses is fairly stable because of like a couple of factors. One is the over collateralization and the high degree of transparency that we have with regard to our reserves. So at any given point of time, you can kind of go to salloreserve.org and see exactly what the backing of the stablecoins is and how the issuance is happening. And currently, there's a lot of improvements that are being made around the Um, around the mechanism behind it, the quality of the collateral that's there to ensure that the collateral doesn't necessarily uh, correlate to crypto. And Raj, as you mentioned, you know, the crypto markets keep um, fluctuating, they move around, and it becomes tricky for us to actually um, build something that doesn't correlate with these ups and downs and has like, and especially because Salo's mission is to build, you know, the conditions of prosperity for all. We want to have a system that is reliable uh, sustainable and that grows organically with time. And so that's that's kind of the purpose behind building this out. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of the ecosystem view. And uh, would you like me to dive into a bit around stable coins? I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, Any questions that uh, you may have? Yeah, uh, you know, just a sense of the opportunity that you see uh, in stable coins would be useful to get your views on. And uh, also some commentary on you know, Circle just launched a Euro stablecoin and Tether announced a yes. GDP stablecoin. What do you think of stablecoins outside of, you know, dollar stablecoins? So where is the opportunity? How do you see the space grow? I think a lot of people are very curious about stablecoins and some forward-looking opportunity and, and uh, how the industry could shape up would be very helpful. Right now, there is a lot of opportunity for um, stablecoins that are, that are building up as independent currencies. So you have like the US dollar, which is like a you know a global trade currency that's available, the euro, which is like the currency that's available across the eurozone, and uh, you know currencies that are building up across with CBDCs, etc. And the big opportunity that I see there is the level of innovation that can come from programmability of this money and the innovation that can come out of it with um, that layer that's programmable on top of money itself. People will start to build very creative applications that will allow for unique blends to happen. And there's two reasons for that. One, the fact that it's fundamentally programmable. And the second is that it's composable as well. So now, Raj, if you end up building an application that's interesting, which offers yield, I could build a lending application that now plugs into this. And that's where the fundamental innovation happens, where these building blocks are built one on top of the other. And then businesses like TransFi, for example, could end up building out like the UX layer on top of it, which allows users to actually access all of the all of the goodness of uh, the, the crypto ecosystem that exists out there. So I think in terms of the opportunities that I'm seeing, I can I can point out a couple of them. Uh, one of them is the aspect of like circular economies and you know supply chains and circular economies. So the use of stable coins in supply chain, etc., where you have like a delay in the time of issuance, but the coin moves around in a circular fashion. Um, that is where the cost of the stablecoin and the movement of stablecoin being low really makes a big difference. And that's where a bulk of, I mean, a, a pretty significant chunk of the value uh, is, is being lost right now. And that can actually be fixed for using that. And that's one area that I'm seeing a lot of opportunity. Second is in the area of like lending and, and borrowing. So there's a lot of people building out really, really interesting applications around this. 
and i'm seeing a lot of opportunity for under collateralized lending currently you will need to collateralize a larger amount than what you have that you intend to borrow in order to successfully borrow that which is typically 1.5 or 1.25 x the amount and under collateralized lending is a huge opportunity that i see a lot of potential for based on you know delegated scores or credit scoring that's based on off chain metrics or off chain analytics um which i think is uh, another area that's very very exciting payroll is another that is you know personally very real life um use case centric with the gig economy coming in and the fact that you're able to basically um remit and send money across the globe uh, could could be a very very interesting opportunity uh, for stable coins and we're seeing adoption for all of these use cases across the globe i think uh, on the solo platform as well as outside based on my research you know the recent launch of like c uh, i mean uh, the euro euro circle stable coin i think it's quite exciting an opportunity for stable coins to just gain uh, widespread adoption because you know you don't want to be transacting on a day to day basis i mean we know that the system that's right now that that exists right now is slightly inefficient but at the same time it has widespread adoption enough for it to you know have that critical mass but that being said you don't want to be losing 2% or transacting in a currency in which like when i pay you you're losing 5% by the time it actually gets to you because of you know volatility of the currency and so stable coins inherently make sense for a lot of real world use cases i think where the trilemma lies and i call this a trilemma because it's actually very important uh, conceptually uh, where the trilemma for stable coins lies right now is in designing a stable coin that covers a couple of the criteria so one is like decentralization perpetual stability of the peg and then capital efficiency so currently i feel like there is uh, no stable coins or very few stable coins that can successfully take on all three of these challenges and do it again to repeat like decentralization perpetual stability of the peg and uh, capital efficiency so i've written a couple of uh, articles around this as well just to kind of give uh, more context and i'll be happy to share the link with you so that you're able to share it with your audience as well but it's actually quite complex a problem to design and develop that but that being said i think a lot of interesting people have been working out mechanisms in order to do that all of the big opportunities that come are as good as the stability and the the long term nature of the coin itself it causes a lot of um excitement as well as anxiety to have like a token that could potentially you know go up or down maintaining the value of the peg perpetually is feels like one of the one of the more important challenges especially given the you know the recent state of things i think it's it's quite an exciting space as well as the, like something that we can learn quite a bit from excellent um, i didn't know of the stable coin trilemma uh, learned something new today so uh, that's obviously uh, it, uh, well put so jesus it, just moving on we are probably in a crypto ice age or you know glacial age or winter by whatever name you might call it and uh, you know um, this is probably the third time that it's happening in 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 the space for people who have been around uh, a bit <laughs> given your solo uh, experience but also you know given your uh, experience at uh, you know uh, funds that you were advising where do you see uh, developer and entrepreneurial activity uh, happening right now has there been a change in the focus and uh, exciting areas uh, given the crypto winter or you think it's just uh, uh, you know the same areas but where do you see real excitement in terms of ideas areas um, where a lot of entrepreneurial and developer activity is happening good question um i think based on my experience with uh, leading founder programs at the salo foundation and uh, and and just like being plugged into the space what i'm seeing a lot of excitement and activity around especially in the recent conference circuits is and this keeps changing every 6 months so you know maybe completely irrelevant like the year from now uh, the intersection of climate and crypto i think has been like quite exciting a lot of rumbling uh, around there what people call the regenerative finance space is is really picking up a lot of steam along the way i think technologies have a hype a certain hype cycle and i think nfts were what was before this uh, but with slowly it crossing to a point where people don't necessarily know what nfts are but are using them it's happening slowly that people are actually adopting it and they're realizing uh, the value of the technology and i think that's like one interesting thing to me so i guess um, one is like climate intersection of crypto the second would be nfts the third is defi of course i think there's a lot of very fundamental basic innovation that's coming through basic building blocks primitives around insurance open finance stuff around borrowing lending yield wrapped assets very very interesting innovations that are coming through that i'm seeing that i'm very very excited about personally like big believer in defi and and the opportunity that it presents for people i guess the the third is more along gaming while i don't 
consider, I mean, I don't necessarily consider gaming as separate entirely from NFTs, but that being said, you know, there's a lot of interesting things that are happening in the gaming space as well. That is quite, quite, quite exciting for, um, you know, the gamers out there, as well as uh, the fact that you're able to transact uh, in-game tokens outside of that is has been quite uh, pivotal to getting adoption as well. And lastly, I think infrastructure plays. So a lot of people are building very foundational baseline infrastructure that is needed for us to get this industry off the ground. And so I, I, I consider it, you know, the building of the airport, the runway, the pick and axe for the, the gold rush to essentially come through. People are building out those fundamental around DAO infrastructure, DAO tooling, voting, um, uh, staking tools that are more user-friendly. You know, you don't have to have a, a ledger wallet anymore to um, stake, or, you know, you don't have to use it, do it using a command line interface. It's a lot more user friendly and more intuitive and so i see a lot of people building these user facing infrastructure as well as developer facing infrastructure and they're all very interesting like foundational basic trends that are coming up and if you ask me what i'm personally very excited about i think it's the infrastructure plays particularly because of how uh, they're not centered around a token but they're centered around just like very fundamental basic infrastructure that will allow for the widespread adoption of this i do have like a bunch of like rfps in my like personal a list that I call my wish list uh, for, you know, people and like startups that I want to see build things out. And uh, yeah, like it's, uh, it's good to see it happen little by little, but that's, that's where I'm uh, seeing a lot of uh, uh, stuff come through and at least in like the deal flow and the, and the, and the space that I'm seeing right now. Great. We like the answer. We think of ourselves in the infrastructure space as well. So uh, <laughs> you've said something that makes us happy. Uh, just uh, closing off, uh, Jason, for entrepreneurs and developers who may be listening to this, uh, how can they get connected to the Cello community and how can they reach out to you? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So um, I'm quite active on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Jason, J-A-S-O-N, Rogues, R-O-G-U-E-S, uh, and quite active, uh, share a lot of content around like crypto and um uh, all of the course material that I teach as well that goes out there. In addition, uh, we're quite active on Discord, our Discord channel. So if you go to head on over to chat.cello.org, you'll be able to access the, the Discord server where you'll get a lot of information and input. If you need anything specific, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to help as you're building out like your uh, startup. And yeah, really excited to be connected with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. It was great having you and, uh, you know, many thanks for your wonderful insights. Thank you so much. And we look forward to you continuing to support us in our journey. Uh, thank you for your time today. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. And enjoy Zurich. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.